everyone. Welcome back to the How to Podcast series. I have uh, a fellow here with me who's been on a Dad Space podcast with me. Oh, and so much more. And a uh, super amazing guy, great podcast. And uh, love talking podcasting with someone else who's doing this and doing it well. Uh, Mark Gordon's with me. Mark, hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Great. Good to see you, David. Thanks so much for inviting me to to have this conversation. I, I, I've been doing podcasting for a while, but I wouldn't say that I'm an expert by any stretch. But I, I always like to hear what I like about listening to yours uh, is that you hear different aspects, like even just having conversations with you in the prep of this, I learn things. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, you're so knowledgeable. It's just really gr- uh, an honor to be on here with you. It's fun to talk podcasting. And the idea behind this is our conversation is meant to help the person listening right now exactly. to us and wherever they are on their podcast journey, they could have hundreds of episodes, they could have zero. Yeah. Um, but how can we inspire them through our conversation? So to those listening, welcome to the conversation and we'd love to get your feedback on today's episode as well. Um, but yeah, it's all in the name, how to podcast, right? It's it's kind of right there and uh, pretty, pretty good for SEO if you want to be found. I actually had a, a listener in, in the UK. Went to Google and typed in how to podcast and ta-da, here we are. Here we were. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. That's awesome. So, um, That's awesome. Yeah. Picking a good name is important. Um, what other tips would you give to a new podcaster who's just thinking about starting? They have a coaching business. They want to use podcasting to bring more clients into their world. Yeah. Where you know, would you start? Where would you start today if you started right now? I I, I think I you got to start with the passion a subject that you really care about. And, uh, and then, but I think that the biggest thing is don't get so caught up on, cause we watch the professional ones and, and we realize, we don't realize that there's like four people behind the scenes <laughs> to making right. it look like a production. Uh, you don't need that. It's actually the conversation and the, and, and the, and the subject matter that people care about. That's why they come and listen to you. So if I was, Starting out, I would have like again. I would worry less about all of the trying to create perfection, and I would just focus on, uh, you know, just being really authentic to to the subject matter, and uh, and and then be satisfied with with the organic growth. Yeah, there, there's all kinds of ways. I'm not an expert on that. You know how to expand that audience, but you, you said that one story about a, a a client. You know, somebody from the UK. I, I actually was a guest on a podcast, which is another great way to start, by the way. If you start as a guest, you get used to the rhythms of a podcast, and that can really assist you in helping start your own. So I was on a podcast that I thought was just a podcast, uh, only to find out later it was based in Belize. And um, it was a podcast <laughs> with somebody that wanted to talk to me about relationships because that's my subject. And um, so he interviewed me. And only to find out that actually his podcast was broadcast on the local radio, uh, local TV station that went all, all over the Caribbean. And all of a sudden, my inbox had an influx of people looking for coaching <laughs> on relationship oh. coaching. And I ended up with clients from Trinidad, from Jamaica, from uh, Belize, from all over that I would never have reached otherwise. And so uh, it, it's really good to 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 be a guest and i noticed one thing as a guest whenever i was on someone else's podcast my podcast took an upswing and also my book sales took an upswing because they'd go to my website and they would find all that i offer and so it's just really good now i, I caution i don't do that just for marketing i i, I don't like yeah. pure marketing i like value add so that's kind of how i I would say if you're starting out, be a guest a few times, get used to the cadence and the rhythms of a, a podcast, and then just be passionate about your subject and and be generous. Share. Like this isn't just mm-hmm. about – even you and I, David, we were introduced by somebody else that I was a guest on his and he was a guest on mine. And and now we are – you know, hopefully can do that too. And, and so I think if we can be generous with each other in the podcast community um, – Listen, there's lots of lots of great people out there doing great podcasts. Yes, um, I like the idea that podcasting has no borders. Yeah, and our voice can go anywhere. That's great, right? That's 
that's the, that's so unique for me when I get a little message comes in to me from a listener or someone who's inspired to start a show based on our conversation, for example. Right. That means that means everything, right? Because that's filling a gap, filling a void for someone, and inspiring someone. Exactly. Um, who who inspires you in life in general terms? Who is the one that kind of keeps you on path to keep going forward? Well, I got a few. I have a few people. I have always say the best coaches have coaches. So um, I have a few people that. Uh, in fact, in my book, I talk about. Uh, you know, in the last section, I talk about the metaphors about building a house. If you want to build a home that stands the test of time, so you need a sturdy roof. And I talk about people you invite into your life to speak into your life to to give you uh, help you are all shingles in the roof. And so when when I so what I do is I have people uh, a great uh, you know great people that are doing great work. And so I would call them if I needed help, I would call them and get advice or whatever. And especially if they're, uh, you know, other podcasters, but also other speakers, I get very inspired by people who are passionate about what they do. And so, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm also inspired by, you know, the big names that everybody knows, Patrick Lenoncy and, and, and some of these, uh, you know, John Maxwell and all these, uh, leadership gurus, but I actually really enjoy the the people nobody knows and 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 listen and come across such an a, a amazing podcasts here and there. And so I'll usually reach out if I if I you know find one like I did you. Somebody referred us yeah. together, and it was like now you know I would call you in a minute if I needed help. Yeah. And and so that's kind of what keeps me inspired. You know, of course, my family and you know the usual answers, right? Like I. Uh, they keep me going. It's interesting because I, I wouldn't say, uh, you know, I'm certainly not well known and my podcast doesn't have thousands and thousands of listeners. Um, and I was going to give up because I thought, well, who's listening? Who who wants, you know, if they're not listening, why am I talking? And And then I'll get a message from somebody and say, man, I heard your podcast and it just touched my heart so deeply. It was exactly what I needed to hear. And then it's like, Wow, I didn't even know you listened. I didn't even know you found that out. I was at a, a function one time in town, and a fairly influential person in our in our area, a uh, very uh, wealthy business uh, couple that owns multiple businesses and whatnot. And I'm at this function, and uh, the she comes up to me and she just says, "Mark, your book changed my life. Your podcast is I listen to it every time." Thank you for doing it. It's like, okay, don't give up. <laughs> yeah, right. Because you know what? The thing here, here's the thing. If it's for one, then you've accomplished your goal. If you've changed right. one life, if you've influenced one life, whatever, depending on what your podcast subject is, but if you've impacted one life, isn't it worth it? Like, I think it's worth it. And the other thing is, a few years ago, I decided, one of the reasons I started a podcast and and wrote a book is because I'm 62, so I started thinking about legacy. I thought, right. what am I going to pass on to my children? You know, not financially, not not economically, but like character wise and nature. You know, and and we've, you know, I've got great relationships with my my kids, my adult kids. But what about my grandkids? And what about their kids and their kids and their kids? And yeah. I I felt like even if nobody else listens to this my family can go back and listen to these and watch these and watch ones I've been yeah. guests on and, and they can hear my heart and hear, um, you know, some of the principles that I live by. And when they align with when they, what they see in my life and they hear what me talking about it, I think it does something in their hearts as well. In fact, I interviewed my son in one of my podcast episodes and that was a great episode just to hear his heart. Like he's talking and I'm thinking, man, he knows more mm. than I thought he did. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and then I also interviewed my wife in another one. So I just thought, you know what? It's about relationships. Why not have the closest people to me? I asked my daughters. They were too scared to come on. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll, I love keep, the idea. I'll keep working at them. <laughs> I love the idea of legacy. Like I lost yeah. my dad many, many years ago. And for me to hit play on his episode, I would love to have that. I don't have it. Yeah. But I would love to just have that as in my library yeah. that I could go to anytime I want. So totally. that's so, an amazing idea. And, and I guess in a way, being a podcaster, you can be selfish and create this for yourself as a legacy in that uh -huh. sense where even if no one listens, I want this for my family. And that's perfectly fine. That is a great way to 
to build a podcast and you don't need a mattress sponsor and a supplement sponsor and right. uh, none of that stuff. You're just doing this because you want to share this with your family. That is a great reason to start a podcast. I think so. And you know what? It's interesting because some podcasts that are are now more now more famous, not done by famous people, but they've they've you know got traction and now they do have sponsors and they do have all these things. But they'll all tell you they, they you know they'll they started just for the love of it, for the subject matter and whatnot, and then it took off. And so you never know what's going to happen. I, I still hope, I, you know, just it only takes one of my episodes to go viral. And pretty soon, you know, yes, you can uh, actually uh, put an ec- economy behind it. And yes, there is ways of making money with podcasts. But that's if that's my first motivation, it doesn't carry as much, for, for me personally, it just doesn't carry as much passion or or uh it wouldn't keep me going just for the sake yeah. of that but yeah. but knowing i'm helping people who have maybe had struggles in relationships who have maybe had uh you know uh, haven't heard some of the principles that i teach uh and and i've had so many people say well that's the first time i've ever heard that and so i like that and and so that's kind of my motivation and and uh as we go it grows Consistency. So we've consistency's yeah. huge. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. We've kind of danced around your book. Tell, tell everybody who doesn't hasn't met you yet. Tell us yeah. about the book and let's promote that right here in the middle. Well, there I, it is. I wrote a book called Relationship Matters, and uh, it's basically the essential blueprint for building strong families and building healthy relationships. And so my heart was I saw coming out of in twenty twenty just seeing COVID and and I always call it the great revealer. And I started to see the destruction that was happening. Now I had already played around with podcasts. I had done a leadership lunch, I called it. And I used to, and I used to just jump on, and this is back when podcasts were just kind of getting popular. And it was really just for my own team. I was leading an organization at the time and whatnot. But then with COVID, I stepped out of leading that organization and started a coaching practice. And so a relationship matters book uh, just came out of that passion to to help bring these principles I learned in my healing journey to the people. Then I decided to start the podcast during COVID. And so I've had now, I'm on my second season, uh, but I started it during COVID. And by the same title, Relationship Matters, but Empowering Conversations is the subtitle. And I just thought, you know what, people are really struggling. They got the kids home 24-7. They're they're, they're, you know, it's starting to show the cracks that were probably in there that they could cover up by being busy and now they can't. And so I thought, you know what, this is a time to have a conversation. So I, I get guests on that have either had experience, lived experience, or are, are in the field and helping other people with different, like parenting coaches and different ones. So I cover, but it's not just for families. I've I, a, kind of an outflow of it is that some businesses have been listening to the podcast and they find that the principles translate into organizational health as well. And so it's been an interesting journey that way. And so the, 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 the subjects are all like, they're all within relationship, but they, they kind of cover the broad spectrum of between parenting, marriage, uh, you know, teams, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's been, it's been a really fun project. (laughs) Interesting. Um, nice segue. Um, how does relationship matters uh, manifest with your podcast audience? Um, not sure. Reframe the question. I'm not sure. What yeah, you mean. I'm just thinking. Like, just take the take the model of your book and what you've written, what you share. Right. How would this relate to your listening audience in oh. building relationship that way? Yeah, it it relates completely, but it also leaves them wanting more. They have more questions, and so they kind of work together. But here's how I've practiced this. And I think this is great. If you're a coach, and you want to start a podcast, um, what happens is in coaching, it's I don't, you know, you don't have the time in the sessions to do the teaching. So coaching is not teaching, okay, but there's principles that can be taught that will help the client uh, uh, put into practice the 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 coaching discoveries you're making in the conversations. And so what I've done is I've married the two. So I will do coaching with them in the session, but then I send them to my website to watch videos, to watch my podcast, to listen to the podcast, to uh, read the book, to so they get the teaching component of it. 
It's me doing the teaching, so they feel a connection, and then they get the teaching. And then when they come to the session, they come with questions. And they say, you said this and that, whatever, and, and we're struggling with that. Uh, you know, can we explore that a little bit? And so what it's done is it's created a great uh, synergy between the teaching and the coaching. And that's that's uh, really helped because I found it, just from pure coaching point of views to ask questions, the answers within the person. So you're, you're trying to draw it out, the answers out of them. But there also is some real uh, solid principles of, of healthy relationships that are there. And, and so I found myself in the sessions doing a lot of the talking and I shouldn't be doing the talking in a coaching session, but it was because I felt I needed to teach them certain principles. It's amazing to me, but even in, in you know, schools don't teach about how to have healthy relationships. Uh, universities don't teach about how to help in. Nobody talks about it. Nobody really talks about having a healthy relationship very rarely, unless you're someone like me who has got a passion for it. And so uh, what I've found is a lot of people just don't, don't even know how to uh, have a healthy relationship. And so the teaching component became very important to the outcomes of the coaching. And that's where I find podcasting so valuable. Hmm. I like it. I like it. Um, talk a little bit about how you structure your podcast, how you record it. You do something unique and different that I I think a lot of people could maybe try. Um, talk about the the way you actually do your recordings for your podcast. Yeah. So I what I do is I use uh, I don't know if we're supposed to. Oh yeah, sure. Give, yeah, yeah. So I use Streamyard, yeah. and the reason I use Streamyard is because I can put an intro. I can use Canva and create um, a really good intro. You know, little music intro video, and then I have like what the what the show is about, a picture of the guest who the guest is and all that kind of stuff. And that is like a 30 second intro. And then it, then it cuts away to the, to myself and the guest. I can also bring slides up if I want to, or pictures up or videos up uh, during the interview. So that kind of helps as well. And then what, what I do that's different is I, I record it like we're live. So the first season I actually recorded live and sent it out to all the platforms. StreamYard will send it to multiple platforms. So I'd send it to Facebook, to LinkedIn, to YouTube all at the same time. And every once in a while, I'll still do one of those. But for the most part, what I found after the first season, it was really hard to get guests because I was trying to do it the same time, the same week, just like a TV show. Yeah. I was trying to do the same time, same uh day each week and it just was really hard to find guests that could you know come at that time so what i did was i i decided i was going to shift it and, and that's another little tip by the way don't be scared to shift things and change things and change up the look and change up the way you do it because i think experimental uh activity is really good in podcasting so be experimental, right? So I decided I was going to shift it up for season two. And what I did, but I wanted, I loved the live feel. Like a, it was, it was good. Like when I went live, we had people commenting and asking questions and it was very interactive. I loved that. But, but the second season, you, you lose that interaction piece, but I wanted it to still feel like we're live. And so what I did was, is I record it like we're live, like we're actually sending it out. And, and so I do the intro video, we do the, you know, all the different things right within that. And then I, uh, what we do is I take the audio part and set, upload it to Anchor, which sends it out to all the different podcast platforms. And then I take the video part and put it on YouTube. Now, what I do with the YouTube one is I use, I use the premiere feature. So we're premiering this podcast, which mm. means it presents like it's live it's a live premiere and so people i send out notice i'm going to do you know premiere videos coming out and then i will go and hit premiere the nice thing about it is that i watch with the people watching because we're nice. all watching it. it's like a watch party we watch yeah. you know we're watching at the same time because it's a premiere and then i can respond to in comments as people ask questions or they say things and i tell people that in the video hey just you know, ask your questions. I'm going to be watching the comments when this airs and we're going to, you know, we can answer That's your so questions. so smart. Yeah. That's so <laughs> smart. Because when you're doing it live, 
and doing it recording live and doing the chat and interviewing and hosting and doing all of these things, wearing all these hats, yeah. something's going to fall off, right? I love yeah. the idea that you just do it separately through the premiere thing. How long have you been doing the premiere version I've been, um, through YouTube? I've been doing that on the like the second season. When I, After the first few episodes, I re, I kind of thought, well, let me try this premiere thing. And, uh, and I tried it. It's actually pretty easy. It's just when you're you know, when you upload in the upload process, it takes you through all the things you have to add. And then it asks you, do you want it, you know, uh, to save it or do you want to, is it for public? Is it whatever? And, but then there's a premiere. If you click premiere, it actually will send it out. You can even do a countdown off that premiere. If you don't have it, if you don't use in StreamYard, just have a zoom, it'll actually provide you with a countdown to the premiere. So uh, YouTube actually provides it. And you can pick from different pictures and, and screenshots that, that come with it. And it'll be a, you know, 30 second countdown or a minute, whatever you want. And so it's actually worked out really nice. Um, you know, now not everybody can watch it live. The thing is, it, it's evergreen. So even once the premiere is over, anybody can watch it anytime. Yeah. So it's a nice combination. I really like that, Mark. That's yeah. <laughs> kind that's of, great. I kind of fell on it. <laughs> well, now you're the expert on that. Because yeah, well, you're doing it. Hey. If you're doing it right, you're the expert. There I, you go. I, have, I, have a, I haven't even tried it. I think it's a great idea. I have a feeling that I, you know, I'm probably missing stuff in it. <laughs> but hey, it's working for right now. And uh, and uh, so hopefully, hopefully we keep growing. Like I said, it's experimental. Be experimental. Don't worry if it fails or flops or whatever. And for goodness sakes, don't don't let likes and comments and engagement be your motivation. Yes, mm. we have to watch those things, but don't let your, you know, don't let your uh, encouragement or discouragement be rising and falling on, on that. Uh, look at it, listen to it back. If you said the things that were in your heart to say, or your interview went really well and flowed nicely, that's success. Just get it out there. You never know. Yeah. Now, the second thing I've been doing recently is when I'm not in a season or I haven't been able to get a guest. And so maybe a week or two goes by. I don't like gaps. I like consistency. What I'll do is actually play an old one. I'll, I'll, sure. I'll replay one and say, hey, here's a retro last season, you know, <laughs> listen to this conversation. And actually, that's been interesting because a whole new audience listens to it now because maybe – you know, my audience has grown, but maybe they've come from other places as well. Not just, yes. you know, I got new co coaching clients or I got new people and they, they don't necessarily go back and look at all the old ones. They look at the most recent. So I find that re reposting some old ones can really help. Yeah. That's a great thing. Again, if you're on episode 20, your new listener is going to find you on episode 20 for the first right. time. And again, they might not go back to episode one. Yeah. I would love it if they do, but they might not. So don't be afraid to share past content. Yeah. That's great. It's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't do it at first because I, you know, because the, the you know, you listen to all these different webinars and whatever, and it's like, you got to be fresh. You got to be, you know, current. You got to be. And I thought, oh, yeah, I guess I can, never, you know, I play it once and that's it. No. Play it six times if you have to. Like if it's, you don't know who's going to watch it what time. So don't, don't limit yourself. So in the off seasons, like everybody does it differently. I do seasons where I go, you know, 20, 30, 20 episodes, I think was my, uh, my limit. And so I do 20 episodes and then I waited, it, it was almost six months or eight months later. And I did another 20. I, I've got to figure that rhythm out yet. I haven't completely dialed into what I want there, but what, what I am doing is when I'm not recording fresh ones, share more of the old ones, keep sharing them. So you've got content there. The other thing is you can take a little clip. I've been taking clips out of my podcasts and I actually am just playing a clip on shorts or on reels. And yeah. that will bring people to your audience as well, because you might have a mic drop moment like many podcasts do. And you have this mic drop moment where something comes out and it's like, whoa, we got to capture that. And and so I've been now starting to look at, uh, you know, I've been just paying attention. I'll go through if I have some extra time in a week uh, or find myself a canceled appointment. I'll just start. I'll look through a few of my, my old videos or my old podcast episodes, and then I'll just take a little a one minute clip out of it. Boom. Nice. The other thing I've been encouraging 
a lot of my past guests um, when they come on my show is to take their interview that I release on YouTube and put it into their own playlist. Yes. And get every time that you're guesting anywhere else, put it into your own playlist that you have through your site. You can share it. You can put in your email signature. You can post on your website, whatever, social media. But it's you being on someone else's show because in, in conversation with a host, they might ask you questions about things you don't normally talk about with your audience and they get to hear new stories, new insight about you that yeah. you might not think to write down or share or you might not even think are that interesting. What but a fantastic idea. It's an amazing way for your audience to get yeah. another side of you that they're not used to seeing. Yeah. What a because fantastic you're in the passenger idea. seat, right? Exactly. Because like when we're hosting, we're just asking questions. <laughs> Let me guess do the talking. That, it's such a fantastic idea, David. Wow. That's awesome. That, that you know, you mentioned it to me when we were, you know, prepping it. And I just thought, wow, like that's a fantastic idea um, because it's yeah, and so in true. The world, in the world of pod, uh, YouTube, they can actually take that same playlist of you on other shows. You can brand it as another podcast. Right. And you don't have to create any content about it at all. Wow. But it could be the Mark Gordon does podcast guesting or Mark Gordon guests. Right. You can call it whatever you want. And it could be something that lives on YouTube, renamed from a playlist into a podcast, which I just did an episode about. And we're going to work together on that and help you with that. But you can just rename a playlist as a podcast within YouTube. It's not going to go out to Apple and Google and and all that, but it's going to live inside the world of YouTube and be searchable. And and anytime you go to a new show and you guest on another episode in the future, you simply add it to that playlist, which is now, quote unquote, a podcast on YouTube. And it just keep building your content and you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Just show up and, and and be a guest on a show. It's a great way. That's amazing. That's a great way to do it. Like if anybody's thinking of starting a podcast and you're nervous about, but you don't, you know, on how to do everything, all the technical thing, just get yourself to be a guest on as many as you can. And you, you can, what you're saying is you can take those guests and create a podcast called me on a, me as a guest or whatever, right? Yeah. That's a that's amazing. What a great idea. And it's also a great way when you're reaching out to be a guest and they and the host yeah. says to you, do you go on podcasts? Oh, yeah, I'll give you my link to my podcast, quote, quote, on YouTube. Yeah. And here's me guesting on all these shows. Wow. It's like, well, now I get to hear you. I can see you. I can pick up on the fact that you are an expert now on premieres on YouTube. And I want you on my show to talk about that, Mark. Uh, you know, like, yeah. so I can, I can pick up and listen to you and, and I can get a good sense about what you would be like on my show in the future as a right. host. Right. So it's a great, it's a great business card as well. Yeah. You're going to bring people to your content, but it's also something you can say, Hey, look at me. I do guests, guesting on shows. What it's a, a great tool. What a fantastic tool. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do okay. It. I, I have a question for you and I think you're a great person to answer this question sure i had one of my um one of my listeners on the show ask me about mike freight and i never really heard these words together but microphone the fear of being on the microphone mike freight right and i'm like oh that's interesting Hmm. because they are new to this they have never sat in front of this contraption pointed at their mouth and um as soon as that little record button we have a little red icon blinking above our head right now they turn into a different person. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's like now stage done, in some ways. Right? You've done speaking for years. You've been in front of the microphone <clears throat> leading yeah. and doing all that. Can you go way back in time to the beginning? And like I can remember standing up in front of like seven, 800 people as a 20-year-old and, and speaking to a large group of people. Yeah. And my stomach's in knots and I'm afraid I'm going to make a big mistake. And it's no editing because it's live. So like all of this pressure and then kind of how you've developed your mic technique over time to be more comfortable and relaxed as a host. Right. Can you go way back and kind of help people who are there right now going, I'm so afraid, Mark, of talking on this black microphone thing. Yeah. What would you say to them? Well, I would just first three words. I'd start off with three words, not for me. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for others. So 
first okay. and foremost, that mic represents other people's ears. So I'm speaking into this mic, I'm speaking into someone's life. And so mm-hmm. right away that takes, but a practical tool, when I first started even podcasting, uh, although I had many years of speaking and uh, using mic, so I didn't have mic fright when I started podcasting, but I used to keep the mic below the screen level. I would have it, <laughs> I would have it even like, like below, I'm on a laptop, I'd have it below my laptop, so I didn't even see it. Mm. I, I keep my eyes at the camera, so I'm looking at the audience. That's another tip, by the way. Uh, when I look at you, it looks like I'm not looking at the people that li- are listening. Yeah, I right, try to, right. if you notice, I try to look at the, uh, the at the camera as much as possible. And so when I'm looking at the camera, I can't see the mic. So that can help as well. But I think I think the first part of that is uh, the other piece, or the other piece of this is that. At first, when I heard my voice recorded, it was a bit off-putting sometimes. Mm-hmm. And and I could hear my ha's and oh's and, and my hesitations and all of those kinds of things. But here's the deal. If you don't listen to that, you don't get better. And what I learned was about mic management is if I want to make a point, I want to talk quieter but get closer. And so I'll lean in. So I'm leaning in to somebody and, yeah. and I get quieter <laughs> yeah. and the mic comes and I say, yeah. Hey, yeah, I just, Hey, listen, this is really important. I want you to hear this. Right. And now all you've got their full attention. So I use those kinds of techniques all the time. Even when I'm speaking live, I, I spoke live last night at an event and, and I would do the same thing. I got quieter when I wanted to make a point. So everybody would tune in. Some people mm-hmm. like to yell <laughs> when they're yeah. speaking. I go the, <laughs> yeah. I go, the, I go the opposite, but I would do that. I learned that technique when I was actually doing a, a, I co-produced a program called the heroes program in the school system, grade eights. You can imagine a grade eight class. They're like all over the place. And, and, and the teachers, I could always tell within five minutes if they're good teachers or not, because the kids, how they tuned in would tell me whether they had the respect, you know, the teacher had their Mm. respect, but I would have teachers tell me all the time. I'm just amazed. How do you keep these guys so focused and so centered? Well, I use the mic techniques or the voice techniques to help do that. So I would get quieter when I was making a point. Hey, guys, this is really important. And I'd get quieter. And if they were talking, some people were in the back, they would police themselves. Shh, I'm trying to hear this. Yeah, Mark's yeah, going to yeah, say yeah. something important. Be quiet. <laughs> and then they would nice. all tune in, right? So in the same way, if you have mic fright, you have to first and foremost realize that the mic represents people's ears. Nothing to be scared of. This is nice. this is like having a conversation at Starbucks with somebody. And that's another thing. You can use visualization. Look at the camera. Realize the camera is their eyes and the mic is their ears. And you just simply you, you just simply am um speaking to you like I'm having a conversation with somebody at Starbucks. And that's really it will help you get re- over that flight fight. Uh fright. And then uh, the second piece, like I say, listen back. And you'll learn uh, the the cadence and rhythms of the voice. And, uh, you know, mic settings can help, you know, give you a better tone and all that. But I I, I don't play with that kind of stuff. I just, I want to be authentic. So if you meet me, you know yeah. that I talk to Mark on the, hey, that's Mark. I heard him on a podcast, yeah. you know, so I want it to be as natural <laughs> as possible. Yeah. When I met with that uh, gentleman in England who searched up how to podcast, we came on Zoom like this to meet each other for the first time. Because he wanted some questions, he had some questions about his podcast and everything. And as soon as I started talking, he just looked at me like, "You're the guy. Yeah. You're the guy I've been listening to. That's you're the voice." And I'm like, well, "Yeah, it's me. It's <laughs> it's. I don't have a voiceover person. It's me." Yeah. Um, what about that whole thing about your hearing your voice for the first time recorded and people struggling with that? I know there's science behind how our voice bounces around inside of her head and yeah. all that is that part. But for somebody struggling and they're like, Oh, my voice, I don't know, Mark, I don't know if I can do this. What would you say to them? I, I would just say that it's the words you speak are more important than the voice you use. And so I, I would, I would say, listen, you may not like the tone of your voice or the sound of your voice recorded, but it's not actually the tone and the sound that make the big, difference it's the words that you're speaking 
So try to hear, like, have I conveyed, ask yourself, have I conveyed what my heart was in this yeah. podcast? Listening back to this, was my heart conveyed? And I got to tell you, when I do this, and I do it regularly even now, I watch all my episodes because I want to get better. But I listen to them, and I'll have, like, those mic drop moments. And when I'm in, in the middle of it, I'll say something, and it's like, that was good. You know, mm-hmm. but then when I listen back, I think to myself, that was really good. Like that just came out mm-hmm. of me. Where did that come from? <laughs> I don't get <laughs> I don't get all arrogant about it. It was like, wow, that was yeah. that, that was amazing. That, you know, and a good interview like you are, you draw good stuff out of your guests. Um, it's it's I try to do that as well. And so, uh, again, what can help with this is to be a guest on a few podcasts because you're not going to be thinking about that as much when you're actually starting a podcast you're thinking about all the details and you've got lots in your head about it that can even knock you off it can it's like it's unsettling a little bit you got so many things to focus on when you're doing your first one uh maybe maybe do a few guest ones will help you kind of sink into that you'll hear your voice because you're going to go back and listen to it and then maybe that will take some of that fear away of getting your own mic in place yeah keep in mind your listener all the time because Your listener at the end of the day, this is why we're doing this, right? I listened to a podcast episode Mm -hmm. and I couldn't tell if it was that they edited it and took all the silence out between all the little pauses that naturally happen in our conversation Mm -hmm. or if the guest was really nervous because they were doing 100 miles an hour and I was was out of breath listening. Right. Like I felt anxious as a listener, like, why are we talking so fast? Why, like, is there, is like the door closing the, you know, the door, yeah. I got to get my words in before this all stops because it's, blah, blah, blah. they're like talking under the door as it's getting closer yeah. to the ground. Yeah. And I'm like, why, why are we so rushed? Why can't we just slow yeah. down? And as a listener, my, my tension level was going up right. as the episode went on. I had to stop right. Good content, but I just yeah. couldn't, I couldn't well, follow. And, and here's the thing. Be relaxed. I, I agree a thousand percent with you. Let's just be relaxed. Be yourself. Because guess what? The listeners can actually listen at 1.2 times. If, they, if they're if they in a hurry and they want to listen fast, then let them listen fast. But don't force them to listen fast by yeah. doing that. So, yeah, just be relaxed. Be yourself. And you know what? Sometimes pregnant pauses are good. Sometimes those, those you know, moments of silence actually is are okay i know in broadcasting they say you don't want you know blank sound especially on radio you don't want a blank sound but it, it's not the end of the world in a podcast and 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 at the very minimum maybe just say i'm gonna think about that for a second stay with mm-hmm. me yeah this is what i think right we just did that it's, so it's an awkward pause mm-hmm. sometimes but it's not necessarily bad and, and so I think that helps a little bit. And what I like what happened earlier, just in our conversation, I threw a question to you and I, maybe I wasn't as clear as I thought I was in my head, but you're like, can you just yeah. kind of ask me that again, <laughs> basically? Because <laughs> I'm not getting that one. And see, that's what I love. That's, that's mm-hmm. real, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, that probably could have been done better. <laughs> as it left my mouth, I'm like, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even close to what I'm trying to ask. But that's it. We're human beings. We're, we're doing this. And, and you might've like, asked it just fine, but I just wasn't hearing fine. Yeah. Like, no, see, communication, no, right. communication's always bi-directional. So it's, yeah. it's okay to take the time and, and, and rest into that. By the way, when I started my, the first podcast I did, I didn't have a mic. Hmm. I just used the computer, like right off the computer mic. <laughs> I didn't know any better. And then I saw somebody with like a setup like yours and I thought, Oh, Maybe I should have a mic. So I, I mentioned it to my son, who's a musician, and I just said, you know, uh, um, I was thinking maybe I should have a mic for my podcast. What do you think? And he said, you're not using a mic? I said, no. He said, <laughs> that I'll be over later. And he brought, he went and bought me one and brought it to me, and this is the one I use. See. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so good, love it. a good boy. I love it. And then, yeah, and then the lights, great. I didn't have lighting and all that kind of stuff. Now I do. I have lighting and um, I have a bit of a, a, a studio at my office office. And then I have where I'm at home right now. This is my home office and mm-hmm. I have a ring light just behind the cam- computer screen here. And, nice. uh, and it doesn't have to be expensive. 
you know, my studio lights, I think that I use, and I use those more, more for my like training videos that I do, uh, cause I just want a professional look, but I, I, I think I paid like 99 bucks for them. LEDs is so cheap, you know, I like know. you don't have to yeah. spend a lot of money, go on Amazon, find them cheap. I, they, they had a deal on, I ordered them. I wondered what they would be like, but they were really good. They worked just fine. So yeah, I bought this either. I yeah. bought this ring light that I have now and it's got like a little remote with I can do different colors and all kinds of oh, stuff. I, I bought it used off of Marketplace and I think it was 15 bucks or 20 bucks. <laughs> you don't have to spend thousands of dollars no. on a podcast. You no. really don't. Yeah. So amazing. <laughs> okay, Mark. Um, I know you're taking time out of your day today. I appreciate it. Um, for the for the listeners. Again, thinking about starting a show, specifically those with a coaching business, what do you see as the big advantage of having a podcast to support what you do with your clients? Yeah. What's a big win for you and how does this serving you? It, it's, it's a huge win. For one thing, it helps me think out loud <laughs> because I'm a verbal processor, so it lets me think out loud. Secondly, it gets content to my clients that they would not have had otherwise. And it keeps them in my orbit. I, keep, I call it the relationship matters ecosystem, right? It's like it keeps them in my orbit because um, they're they're comfortable with me. They've uh, they've been able to um, you know trust me, and so it is. It's helped hugely. I would suggest if you're if you're thinking of this, why don't you do five episodes? Just start doing with five episodes. Do a pilot. Maybe get some feedback from a family and friends, a few family and friends, and say, what do you think of this? And then if they say, yeah, tweak it here, tweak it there, do the tweaks, and do four more, and 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 then release five in a row, and just see how yeah. it goes. Just see how Good. it goes. See what the feedback is. And uh, I'll just say this. I, I can't speak for you, David, but I'm sure you'd be happy. If you are serious about this, and you're getting, just getting started, and you could use a boost, I'm happy to come and be a guest on yours. And I'm sure David would as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. We we would come and be guests on yours to help you just produce a good quality uh, podcast, you know, right out of the gate. Uh, as you can tell by our conversation, we're, we're seasoned talkers. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you, uh, we're just going to say, if you're listening to this and you come across it, uh, reach out to either one of us. We're happy to, we're happy to help you out and, and be be there for you and just experiment. You know what I, I had a, I'll just close with this. I had a guy in New Jersey that connected with me because of the podcast. He wanted, he was thinking of doing a podcast, but he wasn't totally confident, but he loved my focus on relationships. And he was in uh, a business and he actually worked in the area in uh, with the MBA in marketing and whatnot. And so he he wanted to do something with uh, legends of the MBA because he knew them. He had met them through the years. And he said, he but he was kind of nervous. So I said, I'll tell you what, why don't we do a summer series? And so we did a summer series about relation on relationships. And he was the host and he interviewed me. And, and we just put five, I think it was maybe five or four or five episodes together. And it gave him the confidence <laughs> to move ahead and now he has a legends he he interviews like like superstars of the nba and he just talks about life after basketball and so i yeah. i just thought it was so cool that i could be part of that just simply because he heard me and then we talked about it and he's become a good friend we've never met nice. in person <laughs> it's all been like this <laughs> it's all been on yeah. zoom <laughs> that's but, amazing isn't that amazing I, that's what i love about podcasting the community is so rich in generosity and love and uh and so we're all in this together folks so hit us up if you need help amazing and if you want to up your relationship status uh grab mark's book make yeah. sure you buy that and support mark as well mark. and take a listen to his podcast we're going to have uh links to your podcast tell us about your website as well mark yeah markgordon.ca it's um canadian so we're the Canadian boys. Uh, a. Yeah. A. Uh, yeah. yeah. So markgordon.ca and everything's on there. You can all my links to the social, to YouTube, to uh, the podcast, to uh, 
um, coaching to uh, online courses, all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, just go to markgordon.ca. And uh, and if you can reach out to me through there, like c- contact with or, or do a discovery call, you can actually just book the appointment right on there. And so if you're listening to this and you do want help with the podcast as a guest, just send me one of those and we'll have a 15 minute chat to see if it's a fit and if I can help you. And I'm happy to do that. And if you're a podcaster using YouTube and you want to try Premiere yeah. option that Mark was talking about, yeah. maybe catch one of the future episodes with Mark and sit in and be part of the chat and yeah. and participate. That way, it's a great if you're a podcaster and you want to learn how to do it, leverage what Mark's already doing and kind of come in behind him and, and learn from him as he's doing it with his audience. That's a great a great tip, Mark. I'm I'm going to be doing that myself awesome. now listening to you. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing so, such great wisdom. The whole mic fright thing, I think you really you really gave us some amazing insight onto that. And I, I really appreciate that. Thank you for making time yeah, to be th- part of the How well, to thank, Podcast show. Thanks, David. I'm happy to serve. And I'm just so grateful for you. And the work you're doing is is just invaluable. So thanks so much. It's fun meeting great new people. And if that alone is a reason to start a podcast, then start a podcast because you get to meet great people like Mark and uh, makes your world better by having good people in your life. So thanks. Awesome. Thank you.